version 2.1 has had an amazing character like Akron that just came out and was really, really fun. But of course, we're getting to the end of version 2.1, which means that we are going to see the, you know, announcement, or not really announcement, but the release of Aventurine. Now, I'm excited for Aventurine because I do like preservation characters. I think that they have a good spot in the meta, obviously, being the protectors of our DPSs. But of course, should you summon? for adventuring well that's what we're going to be talking about today so don't forget to like comment subscribe and of course comment down below on what you think about adventuring and of course don't forget i'm sponsored by the ever wonderful gamer subs make sure to use code tystra for 10 percent off and y'all we just got the new uh flavor raw meat by of course papa meat aka meat canyon so if you are a fan of meat canyon's work which i love meat canyon he's his his stuff is really really good in my opinion but of course if you're a fan, get raw meat. It is the taste of summertime. Mmm, so good. Anyways, before we get to on to, you know, Papa meets Schmeet, whatever the hell you want to say, I don't know. Let's go ahead and talk about the banner. Now, of course, I do have the banner details uh, basically coming from here, which is uh, Games 8. But we're going to talk about each character individually. So we're going to talk about Serval first. Serval, when the game started, right? was one of the best DPSs in the game. Or at least that's what it seemed like as a four-star character. She was outputting a lot of DPS. Hell, in some cases was outputting more DPS than Jing Yuan. Does she have a solid place in today's meta? Yeah, especially with, you know, sets that came out like the Ash Blaze set that helps out with, uh, you know, damage over time or uh, follow-up attacks. I think it's follow-up attacks. That's what it was. Follow up attacks. I'm stupid. Don't don't bite me. I'm I'm thinking of a different set. The, I think it's persuaders or what was it? Prisoners. Prisoners. Sorry, I have it written down. I have a uh, I have little notes that people see. I I make notes of everything. Yes, I write my notes down. Back off me. Um, but yeah, Ash Blaze is good for helping out with follow up attacks. So Serval got a little bit of extra like help in that regard. Uh, does Serval have a good standing in the meta or today's meta in regards to certain things? Uh, I think so. Uh, in pure fiction, you could use her, but I think that she just gets outclassed now with Jing Yuan getting a solid boost from Ash Blaze uh, and a couple other units getting solid, solid boosts and helping out with uh, either DOT or even follow up attacks. Hell, he even Himiko boosted up in damage like crazy and is used a lot. Uh, Himiko and Herta are still like two of the top best characters in regards to pure fiction not the best i think uh i haven't experimented with them too much but um serval definitely does have a place so if you don't have any good erudition characters uh serval can be that good erudition character and also she works because of the fact that you get her for free so that could also be a downside though because you're only going to be really summoning for her because of the fact that you're getting eidolons so there's that Next character on the list is Lynx, and I haven't used Lynx a lot personally, but Lynx has some really, really good uses, especially with her kit. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about her skill really quick. Uh, skill right here. Uh, survival response is applied to a single target ally and increases their max HP by 8.75% of Lynx's max, max HP plus 256. And if the target ally is a character of the path of destruction or preservation, the chance of them being attacked by enemies will greatly increase. So she will take like mitigation in a sense i guess um or i think it's uh the preservation character or destruction character uh will be attacked will be the ones that are attacked which works because if you're summoning for adventurine then you're also going to be you know basically going for you know links or yeah you get what i'm trying to say links works well with uh preservation characters in that regard um, she won't get hit, which is cool because I don't think there's ever a situation where you want your healer to get hit, right? So there's that. Overall, Lynx's healing is decent. I think that she's really, really good in that regard. Uh, she's probably a better, well, not probably. She is a better abundance character than Natasha at this point. That's just my opinion though. Let's talk about Luca, right? So Luca is pretty dang good. Um, not like crazy good. I believe nihility wise, he's definitely not like better than say like Pella or um, any of the five star characters, but he's still decently well. I think he even gets outclassed by Sampo. But the thing is, is that I feel that nihility characters in general are just really good. 
I I don't think I've seen a terrible terrible nihility character and if you have let me know in the comments down below would love to hear y'all's opinions on it but luca i think is definitely one of those ones where like you're not going out of your way to get him but he's definitely a really cool character the fact that he's got that giant mech arm is just really really cool so i definitely give high regard to luca for being a cool looking character but fun wise i don't know i can't really say yay or nay on it there is one other character that I wanted to bring up, and I forgot that she's also getting a rerun, and that's, of course, Jing Liu. Now, Jing Liu works really, really well in regards to this because she could work in a team with, let's say, Lynx, Jing Liu, and, of course, Aventurine. You could you could put whoever you want on there uh, outside of that, but you could put Lynx probably uh, two spots away from uh, Aventurine or even Jing Liu. It's kind of tough because Lynx would have to be in the middle because the reason why is because if if the enemy is going to target your destruction or your preservation character you want Lynx to be away from them so then that way Lynx can heal and if AoE damage comes up she's not going to get hit however that, we're not here to talk about more about Lynx we're here to talk about Jing Liu because Jing Liu's damage output is decently good um is she broken in some cases yes she does do a lot of crazy output damage um but i think that she's still outclassed by a or lune and that might be that just might be me um but you know let me know in the comments down below are you having more fun with jing liu um of course jing liu is hot and she's also voiced by amelie which she is fantastic i love her as a voice actor and jing liu does very good damage very good damage my jing liu needs to be powered up a little bit so i might be a little bit biased because my imbibitor lune got is severely lucky with relics um so jing liu could probably be up there with imbibitor lune um but unfortunately i've only seen my imbibitor lune pull those pull those numbers jing liu does really good as well and of course, let's talk about the Man of the Hour Adventurine. I'm not going to go too much into his kit, but I will say he was a lot of fun to use within the storyline of version 2.1. I think it was really, really cool to include you actually being able to use him within the story. So I hope that the Hawkeye Starwell development team keeps with that because that was a really, really cool idea. Um, Adventurine is preservation imaginary, uh, which is cool. I think that almost gives imaginary every single uh pass but i could be wrong um but either way adventure is really really cool he has a lot of really cool uh abilities to be able to grant a lot of shields and the crazy thing is is as a preservation unit you actually want to give him crit damage which is pretty cool i think that's a cool concept of having a defensive wall that could also uh do a little bit of damage now granted he's not going to be your dps but he's a pretty good preservation unit. Does he outclass the likes of Fu Xuan? I don't think so, but I also don't think that he's in the same realm. And what I mean by that is you look at Fu Xuan and Fu Xuan is damage mitigation. Adventurine here is a shielder through and through. So think of it like the difference between like, you know, somebody who's going to split the damage evenly to make it so that everybody takes the hits and nobody dies, but it's just more so like, you know, well, not even so that no one dies. Like it just makes it so it's split evenly so that nobody's taking a massive hit. Uh, and then you have a shielder who's going to just literally negate the damage in, in general. There are uses for both. And I think Adventurine fits into that shielder bracket. Is he gonna be great? Absolutely. From what I've seen in his kit, and we'll talk about it in the kit guide or the build guide uh, here in a couple days. Uh, but I think that Adventurine is really solid as a preservation unit. And if you're looking for a second string of uh, preservation unit to go in your teams, and you just wanna get rid of like, you know, your uh, Geppards, your uh, Fire Trailblazers, like you wanna make your tra Fire Trailblazer an Abundance Trailblazer instead, then I'd say Adventurine's your call. Should you summon on Jing Liu? If you summon on Akron, there, in my opinion, there is no reason for you to summon on Jing Liu because they are going to do basically the same thing, except for Akron is going to out damage Jing Liu, in my personal, personal opinion, right? And even if that, if you got a Bibiter Lune, you're not going to need Jing Liu. I think you should still summon because it's Amelie and I love Amelie, but that's just me. 
I I will say in in general, unbiased. I don't think that you should summon for Jing Liu if you've already summoned for Akron. If you need that DPS, Jing Liu is a good summon, one hundred percent. Should you summon for Adventurine? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I think that Adventurine is not going to be like absolutely game breaking, but I do think he's going to be that unit that you're going to need for your team because he is a very solid team option. But that's only if you need another preservation unit, because I do think that there's some parts of his kit that are a little bit wonky, like his uh, dice roll uh, overworld technique. Um, that could cause a little bit of issue, right? But I do think he's worth it. If you put your uh, Stellar Jades towards him, I, I couldn't blame you. I really couldn't because I think it's a solid option. So, and that's going to be it. That's going to be it for me today. All I can talk about with these summons, right? So if you are going to summon on Adventuring, I, I got to make sure Adventuring, not Adventuring. If you're going to summon on Adventuring, let me know in the comments down below and tell me what you're most excited for with this kit. And of course, stay tuned on this channel because we will be summoning for Adventuring, right? We will be putting Stellar Jades into this banner, but that's going to be it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And of course, don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use Kotasha for 10% off. And of course, that's going to be it. Love you all to death. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.